going to talk about uh, RDMA. Uh, we are talking. We are going to talk about uh, us a little, and then uh, about what is RDMA and why do we need it. We are going to get in some technical, boring details and talk about future plans. And then we go to lunch. So let's start. So my name is Marcel. I'm from the KVM team in, in Red Hat. I'm dealing with low-level stuff, PCI Express, and trying to bring Q35 PCI Express machine to an enterprise level. Yuval is from uh, Oracle's uh, kernel team dealing with networking and RDMA. Now, I want to emphasize this project is our own initiative and uh, but but it is fully backed up by Oracle and Red Hat, and we thank them for him for, for that. Um, now we had to make a choice how to do something like that because implementing such a device it will take a lot of uh, uh, an amount of time that is not feasible for two people working in uh, you know like uh, part time. So we selected VMware's PVRDMA device implementation in order to have or because they already have an, uh, a Linux driver in the guest and they have already libraries ready for it so we could concentrate only on the QEMU implementation of the PVRDMA device and the backend. Now, uh, so we also have another small win because if you see any designer or some stuff we can always say that it's VMware fault and not ours. So. Now, let's talk a little about RDMA. Uh, does anybody in this room know something about RDMA but the fact that it exists? Oh, good. Maybe you can skip the intro. So, okay, so half of our, okay, no, doesn't matter. So, for the ones that, doesn't, that don't know, actually, InfiniBand is an open standard. And it talks about, it, it refers to a switch-based, point-to-point, reliable, lossless, and self-management network that gives us a lot of cool things. First of all is operating system bypass. Now, we can say, okay, we have DPDK, we do the same there, yes, but you lose CPU sockets, and it's a lot of, you know, now you have to, to do all kinds of special stuff. Now, in InfiniBand, it, all stuff, it is done by the hardware itself, okay? You don't, the operating systems know nothing about it, the CPU knows nothing about it, uh, uh, it's, it's all in hardware. The other thing is remote DMA. So you say, okay, I have DMA, right? I have the buffer, it, I, I can put it in the memory, and then, oper and then the operating system can use it, yes. But with remote DMA, you can actually read or write to a remote machine to a specific address, right? So you don't have to, to prepare bus buffers and stuff. You already have them. And with that in mind, we, we, get, we can get up to, or down to one microsecond latency. And this is a graph, I downloaded it from the InfiniBand uh, website a few hours ago. And everybody's talking about 100 gigs Ethernet that it is so cool and so great, but what people don't know is we will have, like really soon, a 200 gigs device in RDMA, and most important, it is far from being the greatest. You can see on this graph, there are approaching 300 gigs and, si and 600 gig speeds. The so throughput is fantastic. And <coughs> what is my point? My point is, at some we, we need it, right? At some point, users will want it, customers will want it. Camo, Camo cannot stand aside and say, we don't need RDMA, you know, it's just a corner stuff. And in order to emphasize, now, I always, I, I will use RDMA instead of InfiniBand. Of course, it's not the same terms, but for the purpose of these presentations, I'm allowing myself to interchange those terms, okay? So look on this, on, on the left side, in order for application to get a buffer, it has five steps at least, right? And with the RDMA device, an application using a user level library can access the buffer directly. Mm. Hello. So uh, to understand this, uh, how this um, magic of kernel bypasses uh, is done, we had to come up with this 
scary diagram. Uh, but basically, I need, I need to come up with two things from this diagram. One is to, the obvious one is to, to understand the basic flow of uh, how RDMA is done, the TX and RX path, and get to know, get to be familiar with the terms. So um, let's start with the, the, with the, uh, the simplest one, the, the TX path. TX path is pretty easy. Uh, the consumer, all, all this setup, by the way, is done in uh, for kernel driver, but this is the, cont the control path. Uh, um, so as usual, is uh, uh, the same as in uh, uh, um, conventional Ethernet IP TCP. Uh, the, the consumer will prepare a buffer uh, and, and store a, a DMA bus address of it in the ring. Hardware takes it, put it in a wire, and upon completion, put a completion uh, uh, element or, or interrupt the guest, uh, the consumer. Uh, well, in RX, uh, it's, it's a bit complex. Uh, first, the, the consumer prepare a buffer and then give it to the hardware. So uh, on, the, on, the, on the second flow, the hardware will, upon a receival of a packet, will get uh, next available buffer and store the data uh, in the buffer and interrupt the, the consumer. Um, so where the, the basic uh, elements here are the uh, send and receive rings. Uh, there is a, a concept called QPERS, which hold, compose the two of them. And then uh, uh, Wookie is a short term for worker uh, completion, uh, worker request. And uh, Cookie is a short term for uh, completion element. These are the basic. Uh, Okay, uh, I, want to mention, I want to mention two things about this slide. Uh, well, uh, first of them is that you can say, okay, I still have the network layer, I, have, I still have the transport layer, right? So what's happening here? The answer is, okay, we do have them, but they are in hardware, okay? And the second stuff that is also important, better naming. We don't have SKBs, we have, and we don't have even work queue elements, we have Wookiees. When the packet is ready, we don't have uh, uh, completion queue elements, we have cookies, so it's a much fun word. <laughs> now, we noticed a movement <coughs> in the industry from InfiniBand fabric to RDMA over converged Ethernet. Now, why is that? First of all, it's about, uh, it's, it's about money. It's very expensive. Switches, infiniband switches are, are uh, very high priced. And not only that, you'll also need a special IT team because RDMA, uh, may be, RDMA uh, topology may be a little complicated and stuff. So why not take the existing Ethernet network and still have special hardware, okay? RDMA enabled hardware that can do the same, you can get the same abstractions of InfiniBand and get all RDMA goodies over an existing Ethernet network. And they come up with something that is called RDMA over converged Ethernet, and because it's InfiniBand world, we call it Rocky. Yes, please. The latency is much uh, slower, isn't it? Uh, yep. You, st you, you cannot always win, yes? You, you cannot have everything. At least I, I tried. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't get it. But but you can do RDMA, right? You can have one gig of memory from one machine to another. And even, even the latency, okay, it's not one micro, but it may be better than standard Ethernet. The idea here is to make the network simpler. Okay, okay so uh, now... I need to mention that you need useless internet. I, 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 I slide it away a little, you know, it's not... Uh, <laughs> we are working uh, on it that you want. Yeah. Now, okay, so why do it, right? What do we have today? Of course, we have device assignment. It works, right? And we have another interesting thing. Uh, Mellanox uh, just finished to upstream a software Rocky device, a device that is completely implemented in kernel, and you can load it up, and here you have an InfiniBand, uh, an InfiniBand and Rocky interface that, can, that we can use. But as you can probably already you know, feel, 
it will, not, it will never be performant enough because the RDMA, it's about bypassing kernel and, and soft rocky, it's implemented in kernel. So, you know, it will never really be performant. But again, the name is Roxy, so it wins. So now we have to, to, to look for objectives. Because before we continue, let's look to objectives. And we, as we all know, uh, cloud providers don't really like uh, to see vendor stuff uh, in, in VMs. It's a management nightmare. And we also don't want to be bound to number of virtual functions. I always was puzzled about if I, I have an SRIOV device that exposes 10 functions and I have two, 12 VMs, what do I do? And we want the regular uh, things from, from, from migration, like uh, from uh, virtualization, like migration support and memory over commit. But we want something more because we saw that Rocky soft Rocky exists, right? We want to be able to develop and, and maybe use our RDMA applications without, without having RDMA hardware at all. Uh, migrate in VMware machines, it will not hurt, of course. And we don't want to lose hardware performance, near hardware performance, of course. Now, before continuing, uh, if you have any questions, I want to emphasize we are not really RDMA gurus or stuff, but we'll do our best to, to, to answer your questions. So if you have some specific questions that will help you understand the presentation, please do. Please do ask. Because now we are going to dive into the implementation. OK. Good for us. Uh, let's go to uh, architecture, okay? High level architecture. So, QEMU exposes on the left side of PVRDMA device and exposes to guess two functions. It, it exposes function zero, which is an Ethernet function, and function one, which is a Rocky function. It's a device we need. Um, now, we don't really need the Ethernet functions, but it is in existing design of the PVRDMA device developed by VMware, and we need, it is in the spec, in the, it, it not really spec, we don't have such a thing, but it is in his, in his a driver, so we had to implement it. Now, as a backend, kernel has such thing like an IB device interface. It's a logical interface. Think of it like NetDev for Ethernet. Okay, so the IB interface is a logical one and can be exposed either by a real Rocky device, by the hardware Rocky device, by the virtual function, or Roxy, which is a soft Rocky uh, device, can be loaded on top of NetDev and expose the same IB device. So point here, which is important, is that the PVRDMA device from Quemu doesn't care. It, it connects to an IB interface. It can work other way. So what that give us? What, what that gives us? So let's start simple. What can we uh, support? If you are lucky enough and you have an RDMA device, I don't. You can use via. You can have all the traffic used through hardware, and you have full acceleration, and everything is just fine. What if you don't? We actually developed all the project on our laptops. So we are using Soft Rocky to connect two VMs in the same host without touching the, the current networking device. What is the main pass? The main pass is you have VMs in multiple hosts, and on the left side, you see, as usual, you have two VMs, and our PVRDMA device, you don't, you, we, hide it, we, we hide it here, and you see that you are going to the RDMA device. But what is really cool, if you have two hosts, and, two, and VMs in two hosts without uh, having a Rocky enabled device, but regular Ethernet device, we can also do that and it's actually tested and it works. Meaning you have two VMs that from their point of view, they are working with Rocky native, but as, under the hood, there is nothing at them. Not devices in other machines. It's a regular Ethernet network and it still works. Now, okay, so you have 1,000 bucks and you go to eBay, but you can pay for only one RDMA device, right? What do you do now? So the real cool thing is that you put your RDMA device on host one, and now you have full acceleration on VMs on host one. And host two, you can still use SoftRocky as backend and a regular Ethernet device, and they can speak between them. So you, here you have a full fabric network, a hybrid network. 
Uh, okay, so we have our use cases. What about performance, right? So we, we took the Ethernet Virt Ionic as a state-of-the-art paravirt as our place to start. And we said we are going to compare it to the PVRDMA with the real, to, with the real Rocky backend, physical backend, as with soft Rocky backend, when we are looking to the throughput for large and small packets. Now, we, expe we expect that the PVRDMA device with the RDMA backend to be much, much faster than Virtionic, okay? Uh, but we think that even with soft Rocky, we can achieve almost the same, almost. Now, um, I think that's all for, for this one. So we wanted, uh, I wanted you to see some numbers. So we said, let's, let's take a step back, okay? And say, why have this device at all? Let's use the, the soft Rocky device, the Roxy device inside guests. So we have two guests, we load up the Roxy driver and, and, we, and we measure how much time it takes to, to transfer a message, to get a message from one VM to another. As you can see, the PVRDMA, the PVRDMA device, uh, which is in uh, blue color, it, is, it doesn't care about, uh, about the message size, while the Roxy device, it, it is go exponenti exponentially slower. And as I said, it fits with our belief that you cannot do efficient, st efficient RDMA device inside the kernel because you want to bypass it. Okay, before going to the real boring stuff, do you have any questions or what, why we do it, why, why we want to, what we want to achieve, anything? Give an objection. No, objection, no. So, it is, a PCI, it is a standard PCI device, right? So you have a bar for, for uh, interrupts, for MSIs, and we have bar one for the common channel. We, it is a paravirtualized device, so you want to, to transfer, to exchange data between the guest and, and the PVRDME device in Quemu. And you need a bar for the data pass to send and receive stuff. Um, we can really skip this one, but uh, I want to emphasize some of the uh, maybe important uh, fields. This is the uh, shared information, shared data structure between the driver and the, the device. So maybe some of the important ones are the common... No, no, okay. So maybe the important ones are the common channel that is used for by the driver to pass uh, commands, control commands to the device. Same with the, can move the, same with the respond. Control register is used to control the device to stop to start it. Uh, a request register is um, to let the device know that there is a command waiting in a command channel. And with the error register is the way back where the device tells the return status to the driver. OK. Only a few words about this one. It's very simple. On the left side, you see you have a QP number. Think about it as a TCP port number, okay? So you want to send, send and receive, think about it like a pointer to a buffer. So you say, I want to send to this QP number, and this is a, the buffer I want to send. Then you uh, ring a bell on the common channel you all talked about, and there you have it. The same for getting a packet from network. You specify the completion queue number you want to get to receive the message and you specify if you want to pull or you want to interrupt and then ring a bell and wait patiently until the packet arrives. Okay, so um, we need a way to manage resources. So let's get back again to basics. We have, we have this PVRDMA device and it has all kinds of resources. You already know about queue pairs we use for sending and receiving stuff, and completion queues used to get completions of stuff that already happened. But the PVRDMA device exposed, exposed in the VVM is not real hardware, right? So the way we, choose, we chose to do it is to use the PVRDMA device as a mirror of, of the real hardware device. Meaning, let's say you want to create a queue pair in the, in the, in the guest, okay? Or channel, think about a channel. 
So you say, I want a channel, and th we get this info at, the qu at Quemu. So Quemu is a user-level application and host and can, and can relay this, this command to the real device and said, I want a channel, and get the channel and put it up again uh, and uh, bring it up to the guest. The same for everything. It is mirror, it's a one-on-one -on -one mapping of, of, of the real thing. Oh, thank you. Uh, does it mean that you have to have the same subnet manager for all the guests because you, you, both, you are all the same uh, in event partition? So the same subnet manager, I don't think uh, we need in Rocky. There, there is no subnet manager. Every, the host is just like every guest is the, a host subset. Of every guest is a host subset, it's right. So you cannot have, for example, three subnet managers, different subnet managers, like different versions. I don't think it is, it, 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 I don't think it is important in, in Rocky. No, I'm thinking on what you're doing. I was no, but f yeah, if, if you're thinking about InfiniBand, yeah. Oh man, uh, it, it is a little more complicated. I, I suppose you could do something about it. Maybe we can speak of after the presentation because it's really interesting yeah, because yeah, okay. we are looking forward to it, but we are not there yet. This is yet another motive with go for, we, we go with Rocky, right? It's good enough to do. So uh, now, how, how do we do that? Only a few words. So you have uh, the buffers in the memory of the guest, and the driver can pass this information to Quemu by the means of page directories. And then Quemu have now, has now two things. It has access to the address space of the, of the guest, of the buffers in the guest, but also access to hardware. And what is the point here? The point here is the actual queues that do not, have, do not hold data. They hold pointers to data. So what Quemu can do, can get uh, all the information from one, from the emulated Q pairs and uh, do address translation from, from guest to, to, to host and then pass this work request to the real Q pair. I hope it was clear enough. So basically we do nothing. We just, we, 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 we have two queues and we just play with, with one and another, move, move the metadata from one another without ever touching the data. And since in InfiniBand, in, in, in Rocky, uh, the data is everything, the performance penalty should be minimal. Question. I just want to say you're talking about the send-receive. Does it <coughs> also work for RT right? Uh, why not? Because w in, in the work request, OK? What does work request have? Nothing. When I want to clean memory, large amount of memory for RDMA memory, right? Yeah. So when you, when you pin your memory, uh, we get your request. PV RDMA device in CAM, we get your request, and he can pin, it can pin the memory on behalf of the guest. Okay. But this, by the way, is the control the data. Is, this is the ring only. It's not the data itself. Okay, so think about the PVR, they made the device as simple as possible. It's a relay, nothing else. It does not have life by itself. Let's continue. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay, so I took uh, one flow as an example. Uh, forgive me for that. Um, and I choose the RX uh, flows. If you recall, the RX is composed of two flows. One is where the consumer uh, gives a buffer to the hardware. And then the next is where the hardware take the buffer from the wire and put it in a buffer. <coughs> These slides show what is going on, <coughs> which component, component are involved in the, when, when consumer reg, uh, give a uh, buffer to the hardware. Uh, I, I will not go through the entire process because maybe it's more or less the same for each device in QMU. But the most important one is what is going on in the QMU device where the buffer is, uh, is, is, uh, is um, uh, guest DMA address and the only things that the device needs to do is to map it to, into a uh, virtual address of the, of the, of the uh, QMU and then pass it to the host driver, which in turn gives it to the real hardware. This is the only thing that is done in the uh, uh, data path. Uh, on the other hand, when, when packages arrive to hardware, 
the hardware is doing, the, the host library is doing what is expected. It's uh, preparing a completion event and put it in a ring where the host drivers pick it from there and uh, use a callback function into the QME device, which in turn do more or less the same as a real device is doing. It's prepare a completion element and interrupt the guest driver or the guest consumer, sorry. Okay, so to complete the picture, it's again, it, it's about mirroring the cues, the guest cues, and the only thing that is different is actually the addresses, right? Nothing else. Let's continue. Now, okay. We want the problem with such a project that we want it to be perfect, and we want we always want more and more. But in this way, it will never be ready. So we are planning to upstream to upstream really soon a working uh, implementation of the PVRDMA software, and only then continue then continue the work on it. Meaning that we want to add Rocky V2 support, which is the current. Uh, uh, spec of Rocky, and of course we want to improve performance. And the most, the most important thing we want to do is to try to move uh, the implementation to a Virtio-based RDMA device. Now, at the first glance, it seems simple, right? Because we have the common channels that we can easily implement on uh, with using Virtio or Virtio Q. And for our elements like receive and send and uh, and, this, and completion queues, we can use Virtio queues and we are done. By the way, Virtio people, if they can help us in any way with design and stuff, it uh, will be very welcome. But do not forget that once we move from the VMware's implementation, we now have to write a bunch of code for drivers and libraries for Virtio and guests, which is a really big amount of work. So uh, help will be really appreciated. And we have to write it for each uh uh, operating system and guest. Uh, wow, that's fast. So, for people that they, you can see our page, our LFC page that is already in Quemo lists, and uh, if you are dying to try it and see it work, you can get on the GitHub and compile it right now. Um, other than that, we are open very, very soon to questions. Yeah. Okay. One second. Uh, which operating systems today support the um, the existing VMware driver? Oh, uh, can you please repeat? Uh, which guest operating systems currently op uh, support the existing driver? I think that uh, Linux only, from what I know, but because the, uh, we didn't wait for VMware to actually uh, get with an uh, EXE release that actually supports the device. Once the drivers were ready upstream, we, we wanted to be, you know, to be much, uh, to get, to be ready before them. So we actually don't know what they did for other operating systems. But anyway, it's good because it's their motivation to add support to other operating systems. So it's not our effort at all. We in QME will learn what they are doing. Any more? Uh, so uh, I, I understood what you are doing. I just wanted to clarify, for example, the sure. InfiniBand part. So you're concentrating your efforts in the RDMA over Rocky. Or Rocky. <laughs> and so is this working right now with InfiniBand? Uh, Regularly, do you have like uh, an environment with InfiniBand set? So, uh, you know, I want to. Uh, if, if you're referring to uh, InfiniBand run on guest or on on the host, on the host. Yeah. so if there is a setup on a host with InfiniBand cards, Actually. and you want RDMA on guest, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Do you have this environment running and working? Yes, it is. The, yeah. He so has it. Yeah. I don't have it. Uh, I was so that's my point. So I have some environments and I would like to participate. I could talk to you. So like mainframe, I have a, 
sub-channel system configured with Mellanox Connected 3 and 4 and Connect 4. Wow. It sounds really cool so and we are at this stage that we want to, to really go to the real hardware. Yeah, that's the point, you know, like now we are probably starting to test and I could run the test for you and I could, you know, so I'll, I'll talk to you. Okay, sounds really cool. Okay, thank you. Well, that means that it was worth it. Uh, Anyone volunteer any to develop something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, seriously, Virtaio guys, we really could use your help because th in the same way we are not RDMA gurus, we are less Virtaio gurus. So we don't want, maybe we can avoid the mistakes and learn everything again and uh, uh, leverage uh, upstream community for that. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, one question about this live migration support. What's the state of current? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, okay, so. For migration support, well, we have good news and bad news, okay? Good news is because we relay everything, we, the only thing that matters that the, the hardware resources, you know, the QP number, the security number, everything that is in hardware, mm -hmm. to have the same, to have them open on the other host, right? Because you have the source host, destination host, and you already have an RDMA device working on destination host, and maybe, maybe your port, your, your QP number, it's a number, it's already taken by the hardware on the destination, right? So we talked with Mellanox about it, and they do have plans about having a namespace per IB device, IB interface device, okay? If you look here, I get to it. Okay. So we want to be able to have a different net space for fee for each logical IB logical IB device. The same. So if we get to that, so we'll have a virtual function on the destination, right? Mm -hmm. And if the, vi and the virtual function will have its own namespace. So the QPs will be uh, will be available always, right? Right? So to answer your questions, we need hardware support. This is the bad news. But the good news is they are really going to do that, okay? What else do you need be, be for migration? We need uh, RDMA with respect to this migration is not so bad because you have packet sequence number and the QP number mm -hmm. and you are done. Not so much, right? So also good news. Um, Yeah, so design allows it. We are not there yet, but we can actually start working on it because we have soft Rocky and nothing it, hold, uh, nothing it holds us behind. We don't have to actually wait for hardware. So, so it works on soft Rocky live migration or, I mean? Live migration or soft Rocky, we didn't try it, um, but it should work. Because you don't have anything pinned down, yeah. okay, and just, just it, it should. It is. I, I, let, let's look at it another way. Soft Rocky is built on top of NetDev of an Ethernet mm -hmm. device, and Ethernet devices are migrat migratable today. So case yeah. closed. It should work from the host point of view. It's an Ethernet device. Okay. So and we we know today to migrate Ethernet. So it should simply work. And this is why I think that also our project, which is built on all the backend, is this kind of interface, it should also have no problem to migrate. Okay, thank you. But I have a question, sorry. <laughs> um, so our problem with the QP numbers are more or less the same as a TCP uh, source port. So I wonder how it is working on migration. It's, uh, I'm new to this QMO environment, so when migrating to another host. How, how is the source port of the TCP peer is uh, maintained? Anyone knows? <laughs> Sorry? You're migrating the layers too. So you're migrating uh, MAC addresses and the whole TCP state is starting to get. <laughs> but but on, on the peer side, on the destination side, uh, I don't know how it is called, Maybe the port is already taken, the source no, 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 port. No, 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 no. It's a virtual port. It's, 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 it's the same machine. machine. It's 
Ah, okay, so, so it's not the same, it's, oh, I see. It's like a virtual interface, so it's not on. Okay, so we can't utilize this uh, yeah. mechanism. Uh, I think you have a question, sorry. You have a question? <laughs> no, okay. Any, any more questions? Okay, so we are done. We can go to lunch. Thank you.